to get rid of our capacitance and our leak current, mm -hmm. how to subtract that from our voltage clamped data. Mm -hmm. um, and we said that if we have our nerve or a neuron sort of bathed in uh, choline instead of sodium, mm -hmm. that we would be able to subtract out our sodium. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us completely with how potassium works. Mm -hmm. So let's draw again our voltage clamp sort of setup mm -hmm. with, I always want this to be like dashed line. Mm -hmm. And we'll put that at negative 60 mm -hmm. millivolts again. Mm -hmm. um, and let's say we step the neuron up this time mm -hmm. because we already stepped it down and that mm -hmm. doesn't activate our potassium. Mm -hmm. So let's step it up to zero millivolts. That That's works. pretty intense. And let's figure out what happens. So we have our immediate step up, nice straight lines. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And so let's figure out what happens with our current. Right. So we can't experimentally get rid of our leak and our capacitance, right? You usually end up having them there, unless you have a computer program that's so good that it subtracts it out immediately. But most of the time it does show up in your clamp and you have to then deal with it. Okay, so we, so it would show up and so we should be able to understand how it works. That's so let's we start off with our at our resting potential, mm -hmm. and so we start off at a current of zero. Yep. And then we step our membrane up. Mm -hmm. So let's again draw this mm -hmm. in out. So we talked about how if we if we stepped it down, then we have that capacitive charge. The same thing would mm -hmm. happen if we stepped it up, right? Yeah, that's right. So you'd be el eliminating all of these. Our negative charges inside. So by adding sort of the positive That's charge right. and stepping it up. Right. And so now suddenly you would get all this, that at changing charges on the membrane creates a strong capacitive current. Because as those charges change, they push away charges on the other side of the membrane. And so suddenly you now have a capacitive, very brief, but very intense capacitive current going out. Exactly. And then you settle down initially into the leak. Mm -hmm. But then more slowly, L for leak. leak. Right. Then more slowly, you get an outward current that continues to get larger for as long as the step is on, Just up to a about point now. it saturates. And then as soon as it's you step back. So wait, let's talk about why this happens. Okay. So our we talked about why the capacitance. That's right. We talked about why we go back to leak. Right. Because we're we're continuously adding these sort of positive charges. Mm -hmm. Um, and then because we've depolarized the membrane. Mm -hmm. We open up a set our... of gates for, remember we talked about the end gates. Mm -hmm. So those end gates suddenly open up, they take some time, but they open up. And now which way is potassium, where's potassium high? Potassium is high inside. Which means it's gonna to wanna to go out. Yes. It's starting to pull outward charge. So it's, that's an outward current of positive charges carried by potassium. That's right, out, in. And it continues to develop for as long as you keep it on, though it will finally saturate. And then, if you suddenly turn it off, what's going to happen? Well, our... Step down voltage. So now suddenly that's changing charges. Whenever you change charges across the membrane, that's yeah. going to generate a... Our capacitance. A capacitive current. And then that decays quickly because the charges settle down. And then you're back to the leak, which at rest is just... Zero. Exactly. So now, because you've done all that hard work, you can subtract out all this other stuff and just look at the current that's due to the potassium. So let's do that. All right. So potassium. Mm -hmm. So it should look something, if we got rid of our, our yeah, so capacitor and our leak. It should so probably... make sure you wait long enough so that there. Okay, now it starts. Yes. Okay, good. And then it decays, but not instantaneously, but a little faster than it turned on. And that's at that. Good. Okay, so let's say we stepped it to a different voltage. Good idea. Let's say we stepped it to like negative 30. Right, now it's intense. 
We can skip the middle stage. Mm -hmm. Let's see this. It would just not activate as strongly. That's right. And you can see that it also activates more slowly. Yes, that's very important, and that was something that Hodgkin Huxley noted, and that they felt they had to deal with. And they did. Save so it on up to positive 30. Oh, that's what I'd like to do for the action potential. Mm -hmm. Then it would activate quicker right. and stronger. Right. And then inactivate. Good. So let's talk about why it doesn't activate instantaneously. Because if you remember with our uh, capacitance, mm -hmm. like the charging of the membrane, what that looked right. like is we had a very sort of rapid not quite that that's a shark fin right. but it was it was very rapid that's right and then a rapid fall exactly and it was it was an instantaneous sort of on or off mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. however this one is is much more gradual mm -hmm. and is not instantaneous and so what Hodgkin and Huxley did this is a guess they assumed that there was something else going on there were these things called gates and they used a variable called n and now n is a probability of a gate being open, and it ranges from zero, that's where the gate's closed, mm -hmm. to one, that's where the gate is open. Okay, so okay. we want to indicate that it ranges from zero to one. And now, this is a probability problem. If you need four of these things, which is what they fit to the data, they said you could use a higher number, but it wasn't worth the computational effort, and they were doing hand crates calculation so they, that meant a lot so if you had a fair coin and you asked how many how likely was it for me to get heads and the probability of heads was one half each if they're fair and they're four independent coins right then right I'd have to multiply the probabilities of those four coins so I would end up with one half times one half times one half times one half and to the fourth or one to the sixteenth which is a pretty small number. That's 0 0.0625. Which is really small. I'm not that likely to see that. No. Now let's say that my coin isn't fair, or my gates, which it turns out are dependent on voltage, are biased because I used a positive pulse. And now there's a 0.9, 9 tenths probability that they will that any one of them will well, what does that mean in terms of all of them? If we do the math, what do we get? Oh, that means that if even though there's a 90% chance that a single gate will open, the probability of the whole channel starting to conduct is only two-thirds, much lower. Mm -hmm. And now let's say that n was equal to 0 0.99. We do the math, n to the fourth is equal to? 0 0.96. All right, so that's now... Now that we have a 99 out of 100 chance that a single gate will become conducting, then the whole channel has a 96% chance of becoming conducting. So, first of all, how did we get, how did Kanchi and Huxley get from these current things to the conductances that they had to fit? What was the equation they used? What did they solve for? They had I, yeah, they have G potassium is equal to what? What's the, this is the equation for the, the leak, right? Yeah. So it's the, it's the same as it was for the leak. Right. It's IK divided by VM minus EK, which again, we can determine from experiments. So they did that. That's how they got these conductances. That's how they went from currents to plots of conductance. Then they used the N to fit the, those, those conductances. And then, so they had a final equation now which puts together all the pieces that the current due to potassium is equal to maximum conductance, the very highest conductance you get to, and now the probability of all four gates conducting mm -hmm. times the driving force. And in a subsequent session, we'll talk about how you talk about the voltage dependence of the ends so that as the voltage of the membrane changes, the probability goes from close to zero, when it's negative, to close to one when the voltage of the, of the membrane is very positive. So just to say that, again, in different words, so our current is going to be dependent on if these gates are open, and so we have that probability in our equation. Right. And if 
the the gate doesn't have a high like probability of being open, say if the voltage isn't high enough, this right. number is going to be really small, and thus your current's not going to exactly. Exist. So if your probability of the gate being open is only fifty percent, as we saw, your chance of actually getting much potassium current is one sixteenth times the maximum it could be at that particular driving force. But if we're at a voltage that it's high enough for these gates to be open, then it'll almost be one, and then it'll be GK max just times the driving force. Cool. That makes sense.